I had a preacher come to me. I was talking to him. And he was talking about love. And he said, Sam, you know what the greatest love in the Bible is? And I said, Jesus. And he said, yeah. But what's the greatest love story in the Bible? <coughs> and I said, no, what are you talking about? He says, oh, say it. One of the greatest love stories in the Bible. And all week long, I started, that came back to me. Came back to me, and I started praying. And I'm thinking, Lord, I have no idea what to bring today. And the Lord started dealing with me about Hosea. If I got a title for this message this morning, it's this. God's love for his unfaithful people. God's love for his unfaithful people. And let me share something with you. We have all been there in our walk with God. We have all been there in our walk with God. If you got your Bibles, go to the book of Hosea. <coughs> it's uh, right after Daniel, right before Joel. As I got to studying this and got to reading this, Hosea chapter 3 is where I'm going to start. Hosea chapter 3 starting in verse number 1. You find it, say amen. 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 Verse number 1 says this. Then said the Lord unto me, Go yet, love a woman, beloved of her friend, yet an adulteress, according to the love of the Lord towards the children of Israel, who took other gods and loved friends of wine. So I bought her to me for fifteen pieces of silver. You need to understand. That is very important. 15 pieces of silver. We'll explain to that here later. For 15 pieces of silver, and for a homer of barley, barley, and for a half homer of barley. Then I said unto her, Thou shalt abide for me many days, thou shalt not play the harlot. And there shall not be for another man, so will I also be for thee. For the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king, and without a priest, and without a sacrifice, and without an image, and without a epoch, and without a, is that turban? After shall the children of Israel return and seek the Lord their God, and David their king, shall fear the Lord and his goodness in the latter days. Let us pray. Oh, mighty God, as I come to you today, God, we ask you to anoint our lips of clay today, God. Father, I can't thank you and praise you enough for what I feel in here. God, open up our hearts and our minds and realize, God, the true meaning of this word today, God, God, help us, God, to seek you first, the kingdom of God and all your righteousness. Father, we ask you, God, to walk up and down the avenues of this house today. God, I ask you to ordain this message, God, for today. God, ordain it across the airway, God, that the people will open up their hearts to receive from you. Father, I thank you and I praise you for everything that you've done, God. Lord, and I thank you and I praise you for everything that you're going to do, God. Help us, God, to look to you, the author, and to finish your birth, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.
Amen. Amen. I want to do something today. I read that chapter, but I want to go back to the first chapter because I, you read that and you think, oh, here's this man that want to go out and buy a harlot and say, you're going to be my wife and why, what's the deal? Why, why is he going after this person before? I want to go back to chapter number one. I want to bring you up to the details of why I read chapter number three. Because you've got to understand what has taken place. You've got to understand when I say this is a love chapter, this is a love book. You've got to understand what true love is all about. You've got to understand. Uh, I, don't know, I know this is talking about Hosea, but you've got to understand this is talking about God's love for his people. Amen. And if we don't have the love of God in us, he talked about it in Sunday school and talked about it before here. If we don't have God's love inside of us, what good are we going to do to anybody that we talk to? What are we going to do? Nothing. We ain't going to be worth anything. We're going to be a church with nothing in it. Come on. Let's go back to chapter number one. And Hosea. Verse number two says this. The beginning of the word of the Lord to Hosea. And the Lord said unto Hosea, Go take it upon you, take unto you a wife of whoredom, and children of whoredom. For the land has committed great whoredom, departing from the Lord. What is he talking about here? Hosea. The Lord spoke to Hosea and he said, Hey, I want you to do something. And you gotta, you gotta go back and study Hosea. One of the prophets in the Old Testament. Listen very carefully when I want to say this. Hosea did not question the Lord one time about what God told him to do. Part of our uh, walk with God is when God speaks to us to do something. Don't argue with him. He might sound crazy. It might sound stupid. But don't argue with him. Be like Hosea when God says to do something. Quit trying to out thank God and just do it. Just do it. Because Hosea, God sent him out. To Mary, now listen. A woman named Gomer. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. What a name for a woman. <laughs> Gomer. <laughs> Me and a friend at work was talking about this this week. And he said, Can't you imagine taking your wife somewhere and introducing her? Well, what's her name? Gomer. <laughs> we laugh about it, but yeah. there's something about the word Gomer that you yeah. need to understand. Come on. Oh, yeah. You gotta understand the true meaning of what Gomer is. Mm -hmm. The word Gomer there means to completion. Yeah. That is filling up the measure of idolatry in your life. Gomer was a well-known harlot in those days. Very popular harlot. And God told Hosea, I want you to go marry this woman. So Hosea did what God said to do. And Hosea and Gomer had three children. That's very important. You've got to understand something. That is very important in this message today. That they had three children. First of all, they had a son, and his name was Jerel. And it means in, in, the, in the Hebrew, means God will scatter or sow. God will scatter or sow. So, okay, what are we talking about? We, this whole chapter, this whole book deals is really dealing with Israel, but God should. Putting it in a story that we can understand. He's here trying to get our attention of, of what true love is all about. Because if you go back and study, back in Israel this time, they rejected God. They used everything else to come in to their lives. 
hearts. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And rejecting the Lord at every angle of their life. How many times in our walk with God before that we just get fed up with it and we reject what God tells us to do and we wonder why we get in the shape that we get in. Because there was a point in this story where God said, that's it. That's it. Amen. Then they had a second child. But first they had a son. Uh-huh. Then they had a daughter. Yeah. Okay, Ma, let's see how well I do. <laughs> <laughs> My wife helps me pronounce these words. Lo Rutherham. Is that close? Okay. Okay, thank you. Say that again. Laru Hama. Laru Hama. Now, why is that important? Because that represents this. I will have no mercy, no more. I will have no compassion for you. Wow. That's deep. Say that again. I will have no mercy or will I have no compassion for you. There's a point in our walk with God that if we're not going to be obedient to him, come on. He's going to get tired. Yes. Then that wasn't good enough. They went out and had another child. They had a son. Yeah. They had a daughter. Mm-hmm. Then they had another son. I think I can say this one this morning. Okay. Where am I? Yes. Okay, you got it. Mm-hmm. Listen, listen to what this represents. Not my people, not my God. Wow. Oh, oh, hey. Wow. Not my people and not my God. Wow. <sighs> Israel is in a shape right now wow. of God rejecting everything that they do. God is so upset with them. How many times in our walk with God has God been upset with of us to the point he wants to reject us? But what did I go back and say before? God's love for his unfaithful people, even though they've done the things that they did against God, God still loved them with everything that they caught. And God still loves us when we don't want to do what he wants us to do. Now, let's go to chapter 2. Okay. Just like a good marriage, sometimes things happen. Mm-hmm. In chapter 2, Gomer decides that she don't want to be a wife anymore. Yeah. She decides that, hey, I'm part of this. Yeah. I'm, I'm not happy. I want to go back to my old roots of what I used to be. I want to go back being a harlot. How many of us sometimes in our walk with God has got frustrated and said, I just want to go back to what I used to do, where I used to be, because I was happier back then than I was now. Don't shut me down. Because we didn't get our way. Come on. And if you study the second chapter, Uh you realize that Gomer left. And Hosea went to his kids. What a thing to do. (laughs) We laugh about it. But sometimes we go to the worst people and get help from. Say that. Yes. We go to the people that we think. Come on. Hey, we thought that Gomer, well, since Gomer's gone, I think I'll go talk to the children. Listen, if you go back and look for the details of what each one of those children are, they ain't going to help uh, Hosea because, uh, hallelujah, glory to God, scattered. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, had no compassion. Uh, not my people, not my God. Uh, I don't want to listen. Hosea is going to the wrong person. And sometimes in our walk with God, uh, when we get discouraged, 
church, we yeah. go to the wrong people to get help. Come on, say that. The wrong people. We go to the world yeah. instead of going to God. Say that. Yeah. Because if you go into the second chapter, <coughs> back down to even though that Hosea gave Gomer everything that she ever wanted, she, she still turned her back on him. Even though God may give us everything that we ever wanted, we still will turn our back on God because we want what we want and still what God wants in our life. Come on, say that. Amen, say that. I've cried on this message. I've prayed on this message. And I go back into my own life and looking about how that I wouldn't listen to what God said to do and how I thought that I know what was best for me. And I thought that I could make myself be happy when I realized that I couldn't make myself happy. All I could do was just make myself more miserable uh, and doing the things that I wanted to do. Uh, but I still I love the gracious God that down inside of me, son. I know that you're rejecting me. I know that you're not doing what I want you to do. I know, glory to God, that you don't want to do what I say, but I still love you. Uh, and down in his side, uh, hallelujah, Hosea knows that, hey, I still love her down in my heart. Let me tell you something. True love will never lead you when you find out what it is. Come on, say that. Now let's go to chapter 3. Because I want you to understand this chapter. If this chapter is going to tell us what the love is of God. Because I want you to look at verse number one. Then said the Lord unto me, Go ye love a woman. Listen to what he said. Beloved her. What? Ooh. As a friend. Love her friend. Ooh. Not as a wife. Ooh. But as a friend. As a friend. Wow. Somebody in here this morning, in Sunday school, I believe, or might have been after, said that we have to go back to our first love. Mm -hmm. We have to go back mm -hmm. to our first love. Yes. God didn't tell Jose to go get your wife. He said, go get a friend. Because mm -hmm. sometimes we mess things up so bad that we've got to go back and find out who that true friend is. Come on. Come on. Sometimes we've got to go back in our lives and build that relationship back up from the ground up because of We've destroyed everything that God had already planted. And God's saying, I need you to go back and start all over and do what I asked you to do. And work your way back up again in the relationship. Go ye love a woman, but love her as a friend. She hid an adulteress according to the love of God towards the children of Israel who love to other gods. And love, what is that word? Fragon. Fragon of wine. What we have to understand here in this first verse that God was not through with Israel. Listen to me. God's not through with you. Come on Amen. Now. Come on now. God not through with you. No. Amen. And I was reading this and studying this. How many times have we had to go back and build that foundation back up again? How many times have we destroyed what God wanted to start with and we've had to go back and do it again? But he still loved us enough to go to be willing to go back and do it again. 
Even though she was an adulterer. <coughs> because listen to me. When he went out to Gomer the first time, she was a beautiful harlot. I gotta be nice. Everybody wanted her. If you study the passage, you study the story out. Everybody was going for Gomer. But this time. When God sent Hosea to Gomer, she was wore out. She was ugly. She was down to the lowest part in her life. All the things that she had before from her man, her whoever she had before, was not taking care of her like she was taking care of first time. Sometimes God will come in and take care of us. And we'll go back down and we'll thank the Lord to God I've been better than what I was before. A lot of times when you go back, you're going to be worse the second time you was the first time. And when you go back the third time, you're going to be worse than the second time. Because the Bible says uh, in the back to you, when the house is clean, how uh, the seven times will come back in when you let it in. Then seven times again when you clean it again. Yeah, we'll see it. But this time, mm -hmm. she was at the lowest point mm -hmm. in her life. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, God has to take us to the bottom. Yep. <laughs> no, listen to me. We go to the bottom when we think is the bottom. Come on. But God sometimes has to take us below the bottom Ooh. for us to realize, to look up. What God can do. Amen. How many of you, you don't have to raise your hand. How many of you thinks that, man, if I would have just listened to God back here, uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. where I would be today, <laughs> if I wasn't back here when God called me, if I would have listened to Him. But I took two or three steps in the right direction. Uh -huh. Then I got mad and went right back to where I was. Uh, and I kept doing it over and over again. Uh, until God said, that's it. That's preach, Pastor. Go on, preach. Gomer got to the lowest part of her life that she could get. Wow. Israel got to the lowest part of Israel could get. Because if you read down and we read it, that was without a king. Mm -hmm. They were without a priest. They had nothing. Because sometimes in our life we're just like that. Yeah. We get down to where we ain't got no we ain't got a husband. We Come ain't on. got a wife. We ain't got nobody to talk to. Nobody loves us anymore. <laughs> nobody cares about us anymore. I'm just out on an island by myself because nobody cares. Quit feeling sorry for yourself. Quit having a pity party. There's a man called Jesus. He don't care about it or he cares about you today. You want to know what unconditional love is? Hallelujah. Even though people let it down, he still loves you and everything that you've got. Amen. Amen. Listen. When God told Jose to go love Gomer this time as a friend, that's very important because sometimes in our walk with God, God wants us to know who our real friends are. Amen. Because sometimes so-called friends will let you down. Stay back. Sometimes friends will deceive you. Mm -hmm. Sometimes friends will get what they want from you mm -hmm. and hang you out to dry. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. But I want you to understand something. 
Verse number two. And I told you to highlight the 15 pieces of silver. Yeah. Why is that so important? Why is what he used to buy Gomer back when? Why is that so important? The going price for a slave back then was 30 pieces of silver. 30, some of y'all ain't even got it yet. Yeah. Was 30 pieces of silver. Uh -huh. And she was bought for 15 pieces of silver. Several hundred years later, in this passage of scripture, there was a man called Jesus was sold for 30 pieces of silver. Come on. Yeah. But she was only worth 15 pieces of silver. Okay. Come on now. Yeah. But Jesus died. It was worth 30 pieces of silver. Yeah. Do you understand the difference? Yeah. She wasn't good enough to die for me or you. But oh. Jesus was good enough to pay the full price for me and for you. He was worth that. Yeah. So he went and bought her back for 15 pieces of silver. I believe this with all of my heart that down inside Hosea still loves her. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. He no matter what she done to him, yeah, she still loved him. She still loved him. Now let's look at this on the other side. What we do to Christ and how we reject him, that inside he still loves us too. When we forsake him, when we're disobedient to him, when we don't do what he asks us to do, oh, yeah. he still loves us. Yes. He still cares about us. Yes. He still cares and loves us that no matter what, hallelujah, he still is calling for us to come back home. Yes. All Gomer was trying to do, uh, Hosea was trying to get home for Gomer to do was come back home to where God wanted her to be. Yes. God, church, God is calling the church yes. to come back where he wants us to be yes. because he still loves us. He still loves us. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. And we still treat him. Oh, wow. The way we treat him. Yes. And you go on down. Look at verse 3. And I said unto her, You shall abide for me many days. You shall not play the harlot. And you shall not find, we should not be for another man, so I will be with you. Mm. Listen to me. What does Christ say? Mm. Don't look at nothing else. Come on. Don't look for nothing else. Don't look to the world Come on. for me to take care of you. Come on. You look to me yes. and I'll take care of you. Yes. You to, you cry out to me and I'll take care of you. You do what I ask you to do and I'll take care of you. You don't need to depend upon anybody else. Come on. I was trying to depend on this and that. And, and Hosea said, no, you just trust in me. God's telling the church today, don't look to anybody else. Look to me, the author and the finisher of your faith. But a lot of times we want to be wishy washy. Because mm -hmm. listen to me. You're going to get to a point you're going to be just like Gomer. You're going to give conditions. <laughs> are going to be at your lowest point. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> basically, if you read this out, God's telling, or Hosea's telling Gomer, 
You'll never have to be a harlot again. God's trying to tell us you'll never have to depend upon anybody. You aren't going to have to play the harlot anymore because I'm here to meet your needs according to his riches and glory. I'm here to help you every day of your walk. I'm here to help you if you trust in me and put me first in every aspect of your life. Yes, Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Because listen to me, if we ain't willing to do what he asked us to do, then we're going to be just like verse 4 said. Israel's going to be without a king, a priest, a sacrifice, mm. an image. Mm. You're going to be without anything. Mm. I like the fish. Been in a while, but I do like the fish. Me and my wife like to go sit on the bank and just relax. Aww. But when I catch a fish, <coughs> thank you about it, but that ain't how I have it. That's my home with you. Out of the mouth of the baby. Sometimes you get a fish and you get it out on the water. And that fish would just flop. Yeah. Yeah. Every which way it can, all over that body. Because it's looking to get back to where it was. God's trying to get you out of the water. Come on now. You're flipping every which way. Come on. And you don't know which way to go. Quit trying to go back to where you used to be yeah, and stay where God wants you to be yeah. and do what God asked you to do. Right. And everything else that comes up to answer that God's promised you. A lot of times, hallelujah, glory to God, we look for love, we look for happiness in the wrong place when what we need to do is look to God. Amen. He's the one that we need to look to. Amen. Because when you get to be like verse 4, you ain't got nothing. Mm -hmm. You ain't got nothing. So listen to me. You got to understand, I asked you to go back and read chapters 1, 2, and all of 3. But you can't get to verse 5 and verse 3 until you understand the other parts. Because what does it say? Afterwards shall the children of Israel return and seek the Lord their God. God will get you out of water. God will get you out of trouble. Mm -hmm. But you've got to learn how to seek Him. Amen. That's it. Amen. That's it. That's it. You've got to quit listening to the things of this world. Yeah. Come on. And start learning to seek after the things that God Amen. has for your life. Come on now. We talk about unconditional love. We talk about true love. And I don't know about you, but this is one of the greatest love stories in the Bible of where Israel used to be, where Gomer used to be, and where Gomer ended up. Amen. Even though she was the best of the best, when she went back, she became the lowest of the low. The lowest of the low. Now, where are you at today with your walk with God? Amen. Are you back in chapter one where you was out as a harlot. That, all that is referring to you was out in sin. I, yeah. That I had nothing to do. And God's rescued you. And you went back. First time when you was in sin, you was way up here. But when you went back the second time, you start going down and down and down. God rescues you. You come out for a little while, and you get mad again, 
And you go back to where you was at, and now you're at the bottom of the bottom. Wow. Some of you watching across the airway, you're at your lowest point, and you don't know which way to go. You don't know which way to turn. Wow. And God's crying out to you this morning. Hallelujah. Come back home. Seek me, and I'll show you what true love is all about. Amen. I'll show you what true love is all about. Amen. Listen to me this morning. There was only one man worth 30 pieces of silver. Come on in. The great harlot was only worth 15 pieces of silver. I promise you today, we ain't worth 15 pieces of silver. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we think that we know what's best for everybody. <laughs> we think that we've got all the answers. I'm going to tell you something. There ain't nobody listening. There ain't nobody in this house today that has all the answers for everything except Jesus. Amen. I promise you, I don't care how smart you are, how big of a degree you got, Come on. you don't have the knowledge that God has oh, for no. your life. But with his love, God will make the way to his Amen. Church, I don't know how this, but this is what God laid on my heart this morning. Mm -hmm. And until we have true love inside of us, we can't be the witness that God wants us to be. Come on. Yeah. Let's pray here. Heavenly Father. God, I thank you for this word. God, I thank you for another opportunity to come into your house. Father, all the praise and the honor and the glory, God, go to you. God, I thank you for this message. God, let this message go out across the airway. God, let it touch the hearts of the people. God, let them wake up for it's everlasting too late, God. So it gives you the place that you would have to be. And Father, I give you praise and honor and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right.